is of course the lock angle axe. And this is just a phone and tape training tool I made. So of course the real lock angle axe has a lot of impact power and uh, to simulate it uh, realistically without wearing any real armor, not, not uh, safety gear, not, not uh, modern protective gear, but real armor is quite tricky. Um, so you will not see a lot of uh, swordsmen against lock a racks in our sparring uh, during training. But the lock a racks, we don't have sources about the use. We have uh, some descriptions, we know it was used, and we know there were um, two different types. There were lock a axes similar to this, so like shoulder height, breast height, and um, like typical two-handed axes, and then there were longer ones, more like pole axes or pole, like like big pole arms. Okay, so there were longer ones too. As we can see this, see this in, in some uh, uh, historical paintings or sketches, like the Panicle sketches, where uh, this uh, longer weapon, uh, this longer lock axe is used. Um, the lock axe has, of course, the most power in smashing things, in cutting things. It's a typical battle axe, um, brutally shaped, um, to give powerful cuts with both hands. You can switch hands and cut from the left side, you can cut from the right side, you can even do some cuts from below, from this side and also from this side. And depending on the, on the shape of the blade, to some point you can also give a thrust with it. It's not a spear, it's not a pike, it's not a bayonet, but still when you smash uh, the sharp um, half moon like point of, of some lock ABAX types into the face of somebody, this will have some effect, right? Um, talking a little bit about this hook you can find on, on some lock axes, the clique. Um, there, is, there are some theories about uh, why this, this clique existed from things like pulling down horsemen from, 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 their, from their horses, dismount uh, riders, dismount cavalry. Um, there was even the theory, I think, that this hook was just for hanging it uh, in, your, in your guard room or something like that. Um, I did not hear a uh, very convincing series so far. Of course, if you have uh, a big, uh, big uh, uh, sickle-like hook on the end, of course you could try, when you fight against someone who is on foot, you could try to use this to pull a leg um, or something like this. Of course this might work. However, the most important thing when you have broadsword in touch and facing the lock aider axis, you need to be aware of powerful blow. Um, we need to do some tests with uh, real lock Ava axes and their effect on historically accurate made um, touches, so that we can really see the impact power. But for now I can tell you that when you use even this, this is an ash shaft and some 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 foam I use, I think from, from kind of a swim swim learning uh, board and uh, a lot of duct tape, even this has a horrible powerful blow and you can feel it on your shield. And now imagine this is real steel. Um, I would suggest to use more cross, uh, uh, like in the hanging guard, crosswise with your touch and your, your, uh, and your sword. Um, and also trying to slip the attack and then going in to use the advantage in closer distance. Similar to the lock Ada axe, many other um, pole arms are possible opponents like an officer's pontoon or, um, uh, or uh, a half pike or a longer pike. Um, we know that in the first Jacobite Rising there was one regiment still using uh, long pikes, so like four or five or six meter of uh, real pikes and um, of course different types of uh, shorter pikes and, and sergeants halberds 
and uh, such things were used by officers and, and, and also by, by sergeants and, and uh, such ranks. Um, so you might face it on a battlefield and uh, so ex besides, uh, besides guarding against uh, the heavy blow of uh, a halberd or a lock apex or something like that, of course you can also tr uh, have, have to take care of um, parrying a thrust. Um, especially when it comes to pikes um, or half pikes, uh, the thrust is uh, the most uh, dangerous attack for you. And um, there you have to, to cover and, and, and close and uh, use your shield and your sword. We will show some techniques later. And of course then there is uh, the musket with the bayonet. And um, I will not show so much techniques with musket and bayonet. First of the uh, first reason is I don't have a, a good uh, musket and bayonet trainer yet. The second reason is we had the chance to do a sparring exchange with our friend Peter from Cologne at the swoosh, um, uh, at the swoosh event in the Netherlands, and I think this exchange with some comment will, uh, with some commentary will, will show how techniques can work and what are uh, what are not so good techniques or where the danger uh, where the danger is. So we will talk about this uh, later. 